Alright guys, I wanted to talk to you some more about trail cameras. Uh, I've been using trail cameras since probably the early 2000s. And uh, I got a couple examples here on the table of some of those early uh, trail cameras. And basically, I just wanted to go through them. I, I, I found this might be a little interesting to a couple of you guys that haven't seen some of these uh, trail cameras and a little history behind them. And uh, hopefully, uh, you guys will find it entertaining. And uh, let's let's go to the first one here. All right, guys. The first uh, trail camera I want to show you guys was this big old behemoth of a thing right here. Uh, this was the Mad Wildlife Eye. Uh, a couple of you guys probably, you know, the older guys probably know what this is and have seen it. Uh, maybe not have seen it work, but this was the first camera that I know of that you could um, take video with, video uh, pictures with, and this you see this is what it took for that to happen. This was, had to be around 2000, 2001, 2 maybe, and uh, I'm going to open it up and show you what the, the uniqueness of this was that you could open this up and you had to put a camcorder in there to take the videos. Uh, this is not the one that I had in here but it's a, this is similar to that. Uh, the one I had in here had the, the big cassette tape that you would slide down in here and uh, record to a, a a video cassette tape this is a digital one but I, I just want to have an example of it and uh, what you would do is down here in the bottom is a little compartment that you would remove and there's a uh, 12 volt battery down here one of the small little 12 volt batteries uh, but you know this is the most of the weight right here this battery it's got to be four or five pounds and uh, you would put that in the bottom and hook up the power to it and put this cover back in it so that you could place your camera on top of this on top of that little compartment there and looking outside this window it's a uh, window in here with a little slide, uh, I guess for daytime and nighttime deal. Uh, but this was, like I said, this was cutting edge back early 2000. And I spent many of days trying to figure the workings in and out of this because on the top here, let me show you close to the top here. This is a control panel like you would have in a uh, regular camera now that you could set the date, time, and all that stuff. This is what this was. It had dip switches that you could flip up or flip down depending on if you wanted to run all day or just part of the day, that type thing. And it did have a, um, a display here that shows you uh, time of the you know what time of the day it was and uh, you had to flip switches like you was in the uh, <laughs> in in an airplane you know these got the flip switches to flip on and off uh, this one says lights I really can't tell you the truth I really can't remember how to set this up it came with a booklet uh, I don't believe it was a, a big old booklet but it did come with a booklet and it would show you what dips dip 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 switches I'm sorry to go up or down to get what settings you wanted and what made this 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 camera run uh, d depending on what you set it for on the side of uh, the cameras back then you had to find you had to find a camera that had this little port on it for you can get the camera the, the actual trail camera to control the video camera uh, it's a little uh, I guess your little cable here that would plug 
into the side of that camera. And once you put this camera, uh oh, once you put this camera in here, and I can't even remember how I got it to hold down in here. I don't know if I just placed it up there, and you would have to get it aimed out of the window, out of that little window, and focus it, and make sure you had to turn off the autofocus on it on your camera and you had to focus it to whatever you was looking at to get it to take clear pictures so once all your settings are put in here and you turn it on if a deer walked in front of it uh, this would trigger and it would make that uh, video camera the camcorder actual come on and start recording and like I said, it every record for you know a couple of seconds, a minute, just like it does now. But you had to go through all that. You had to worry about the battery inside here. You had to worry about the battery on your camcorder, and uh, just the you know just somewhere to put this big old big old thing. So it was a task, but this was the cutting edge. That you know that if you wanted videos instead of just regular pictures, this is what you had to do. And uh, this unit back then was like five, six hundred dollars just for the housing, and the uh, actual camcorder was another two, three hundred dollars. So you're talking about almost a thousand dollars for this setup before you could put it in the woods and go record some uh, videos of some deers and like I said I got two of them and I just thought they was real interesting back in the day cuz like I said I'm just a a, a a gimmick fanatic you know I like all the new gimmicks and I try almost anything but the other one I wanted to uh, talk to you about I don't have one but most everybody that used trails cameras back in the uh, late 80s, early 90s, the whole 90s uh, used them. Uh, they was the 35 millimeter cameras, uh, trail cameras. Yeah, it took pictures. Some of the cameras had just like these old 35 millimeter cameras stuck in them, and uh, the trigger speeds were like four or five seconds. So a lot of these would take pictures of just nothing. Uh, and you would have to go to uh, Walmart or you know the the the, the drugstore or something and get these pictures developed before you even seen uh, what the picture of the deer or whatever you took a picture of. And a lot of times, like I said, on you probably get what thirty pictures out of a a thirty five millimeter cartridge. I guess that's what you call it. It's been so long, I don't know what you call it real cartridge whatever and when you got them back you were so excited and you when you got the little envelope that the picture was in and you start going through them and half of them was either blank or it had pictures of half of of nothing and uh, the other half of it exposed I mean it, it was a big big crazy deal with those cameras because uh, if you messed around and open the camera the wrong way without reeling it all the way back up into the little uh, cartridge that was inside here you would expose that camera to the light with that film to the light and it would ruin everything on there so cameras have came a long way uh, from back with the 35 millimeter cameras and back when you had to put a camcorder inside of a, a big housing like this to get video of a deer. Uh, I did a little research on where cameras came from, where trail cameras came from, and they said there was, was college students at Missouri State University back in the early 80s uh, wanted to study the movement and of deer. So they tried to come up with a, a solution to be able to to film or take pictures of deers and wherever they roamed and all that and I kind of remember this was kind of a little bit before I got into trail cameras I've been hunting since I was 16 and you're talking almost 35 38 years ago 
and uh, but at that time I didn't have any money to be buying trail cameras and especially back then trail cameras was very expensive to the regular average hunter so but they came up with solutions out of the solution it was a little tracker system they had I think it was called the the the, the trail timer or trail tracker one or two but it had a little black box on this side with a string coming out of it and with the camera on the other side of it so if that deer walked by and, and tripped that string it would take a picture but like I said that's only one picture out of how many you know how long it ever sits in the woods so uh, that was I was surprised to see that but I remember having a couple of of string apparatuses back then but I don't remember a camera hooked up to it but uh, a lot of you guys might be able to tell me you know your stories on that type thing but moving right along uh, I want to show you this camera here I have two of them this is the uh, Primo's uh, what did they call this the uh, I can't remember the name of this thing hopefully it's got in here I'm sorry, I, I, I forgot the name of this. It's like the uh, plot uh, plot watcher. I think that's what they call it, the plot watcher. This one, all you did was you put it up wherever you wanted to put it on, and you just turned it on, and it would take pictures. Uh, you could set it up for five. It's just like a, a lap, time lapse uh, camera, and you just put it on your food plot, and it would take pictures all day just you know like I said you can set it for five ten twenty seconds and when you got it back you would have thousands of pictures on there but the problem was you had thousands of pictures but you couldn't watch them you couldn't put them on your computer or your laptop or your uh, uh, camera watch uh, video deal to, to look at them because the software was internet based and you would have to wait till you got home and get on the internet and go to Primo site to to actually see the the pictures that uh, was on this camera. And I thought that was the the craziest thing ever. Uh, even at the time, well, I didn't know that when I bought them, but when I started using them and trying to figure out, man, I can't even watch the the the, uh, the video not the videos but the pictures of them until I get home and try to get you know on the internet to go to their site to to uh, look at them because this was probably uh, 2010 maybe 2008 2010 around in that area and I have no idea why you couldn't download uh, the software for these on a computer or something but at that time downloading apps was not the big ticket I don't believe many people had a phone that would download an app on it that especially that you could uh, uh, a computer that you could download an app on just from the app and look at that type stuff but I could be wrong but like I said, I got two of these. I mean, they work good. I mean, you could put them up and and, and it would take pictures all day. And, and a lot of that helps when you just want to see the activity over a whole food plot. Uh, like I said, you, if you put this high enough in a tree, you can watch a whole food plot and without having a, a, a camera just facing at one little particular area. You can see the whole food plot of deers traveling, what side of the, the, the food plot they came out of, and all that kind of stuff, which was a good deal, but the software was just a problem. And so, after probably two years, I stopped using them. I just, I just couldn't deal with uh, not looking at the videos until I got home. And by that time, you know, I'm going through 4,000 pictures to look and see what's on them. Uh, and I'm gonna, this is, these are, this is my bad list right here. 
I picked these up from eBay uh, probably three to four years ago. These are Primo's uh, little cameras, and I have and I have two of them. But to tell you the truth, I used them one year and never got a picture out of either one of them. And as you can see, I use a lot of cameras, so it's not like I don't know what I'm doing or or what that that that's not a problem. But this camera, I'm gonna give you a good look at it. I have never got a picture, a clear picture. I might have two pictures out of either one of these, and they pictures of nothing. I mean, just blank space, like it took a picture of the uh, black hole or something. But this this camera never never act right, never did right, and I just wanted to show you guys. If any of you guys have this camera, I want to make sure you guys tell me. Did you ever get some pictures out of this camera? I mean, they look like good cameras. Like I say, these cameras are, are very basically new because I, when I used them, I got so frustrated that they wouldn't take pictures, and I took them out. So. I got two of these, which I don't like either one of them. But uh, going, getting closer to now, around this, I say within the last six years or so, I got on to the uh, Spy Point deal. This is a Spy Point Five. Uh, I'm gonna open it up, but this is one of the ones that died. Because uh, the batteries uh, leak on the uh, contacts here, and I never sought to find uh, more ways or contacts to put in here to actually get it running back. I mean, I took this camera apart, as you can probably see. It's, well, it's not coming all the way apart, but to try to see what was actually damaged in here, but these are some of the best cameras that I've used back then back in that time frame uh, you know six seven years ago uh, the spy point like I said I bought probably 15 of these just different brand not different brands but different series uh, this is a five I got the six I got the seven I even got one of the eights and uh, it this this camera was so simple to use and then it like I said you could pull the inside of it out and actually you know hold in your hand and and work all the dip switches and turn them on and all that stuff and when you got ready to put it back in there you just snap it back in there and this part is still on the tree I thought that was a, a, a good uh, I guess uh, not invention but a good way to produce these cameras so but coming up to now I don't have one with me but you guys see me on my other videos with the spy point uh, F uh, the force tens those cameras have started me going away from uh, spy point uh, that Force Tens, I believe, is a 10 megapixel camera, but the problem it would take pictures good in the daytime. I mean, it had a um, time lapse setting on it, which you guys seen. Uh, you can put that on, and you can see the, the uh, actual uh, food plot grow and that type thing. And even uh, you could use that as a, a plot watcher, just like that uh, Primos deal. Uh, you know, you could turn it. Um, time lapse on and you could watch a, a plot with that and you know it's basically the same thing and you can actually look at it on your laptop or whatever kind of viewer you have uh, but the nighttime pictures which you would get a lot of nighttime pictures just wasn't uh, the, the light wasn't good enough it, it just it would only show probably 10 feet in front of the camera so I tried to wean off using those, and that's when I got into the bushnails. Uh, those bushnails just blew my mind. I'm like, 
Man, this is the clearest picture I ever seen on a trail camera. And and that 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 made me like, well, man, these force tens, they out of here. But I've started using them again because I've got a lot of areas I'm trying to cover with the with the cameras and I'm going to give them another try. So, uh and plus with with the new cell cameras coming out uh i'm trying to get back into spy point because i like spy point don't get me wrong it's just that one camera threw me off on on trying to actually use uh the different cameras that they come out with i mean you know they got the force 20 right now which is a 20 megapixel camera uh but it's like 189 i believe you can get it for uh so i'm i'm kind of the hundred dollar camera range uh, I try not to go over a hundred dollars on my trail cameras so I do a lot of searching on eBay if you if you go through a lot of cameras on eBay you can find the basically the cheaper the cheapest one of what kind of camera you want to find uh, want to use so that 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 hundred dollar range is where I try to stay at uh, but other than that guys I think the the Bushnell is the better camera I like I said I can get those cameras for sometimes eighty nine dollars uh, a hundred dollars at the most uh, that's a 16 but I want to try the 20 and see what the Bushnell 20 would do the 20 megapixel camera and uh, I'll be surprised to uh, to uh, see what kind of picture that gives me uh, but uh i think that's all i got fellas uh hopefully you, you was entertained about these uh older cameras here and like i said we trying to do this trail camera thing because i'm very interested in it and i hope some of you guys are too uh so we're gonna talk more and more about trail cameras as the year go, goes along because i look at a lot of trail camera pictures and right now i haven't seen any decent bucks I mean well, maybe one buck that I would call uh, halfway decent on my cameras that I put out so far uh, coming out Sunday I have a camera video about I put more cameras out on uh, 40 acres what we call the 40 uh, I finally got over there and put out cameras like I normally do and uh, hopefully guys you uh, watch that and enjoy that but other than that, guys, I want to cut this video. I'm starting to mumble and, and uh, make it long. So if you like this video, give me a thumbs up. And make sure you subscribe to the channel if you haven't. And always, guys, please use the Amazon link below to try to help the channel out. And uh, if you can, share it with somebody. But other than that, guys, we out of here. Thanks for watching.